Good afternoon, good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, my name's Matthew from Liverpool John Moores University. We're going to just allow a few more people to join this presentation. So we're going to start in a minute or two. Thanks for waiting. Once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, while we wait for a few more people to join us, if you do have any questions you want to ask, we're going to be using the Q&A section here on Zoom. So by all means, if you have questions you want to ask uh, as you hear the presenters talking, or if you already have questions about some of the art and architecture related subjects in the UK, by all means, you can start writing those questions in the Q&A section now, and we'll answer those at the end. Um, uh, remember, no question is too small or too insignificant. Just ask any question you feel you'd like to get answered. That would be great. We'll start in a moment. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon and good evening from uh, all around the UK. As I mentioned, my name is Matthew. I'm from Liverpool John Moores University. And today I'm joined by colleagues from a number of UK's uh, universities around the country. And we're going to be looking at uh, the art and architecture subjects. And particularly, we've got a colleague from Portsmouth University who's going to be sharing with us, which is fantastic. Um, just briefly, I'll ask uh, colleagues from around the, the room to introduce themselves so you can know who's with us. Um, let's start perhaps with Jill, please. Hi, I'm Jill. I'm from the University of Central Lancashire and we're based up in the northwest of England. Great, thanks Jill. And then let's go over to Ian. Hey everyone, my name is Ian. I work for Northumbria University, Newcastle, and we are based in the northeast of England in the city of Newcastle. Thanks Ian. We'll go a little bit further south uh, to Hamza. Hello, I'm Hamza and I'm from Nottingham Trent University and we're based in the middle of the country. Great, and then we'll drop to the south coast. Diane? Hi, I'm Diane from the University of Kent, and we're based in Canterbury in the southeast corner of the UK, about an hour from. Great, and then finally, we've got uh, Emma and her colleague Rachel from the University of Portsmouth. Yeah, hello. Sorry, I'm having issues with my camera today. So you can't see me, but you can hear me. Um, and I'm from the University of Portsmouth. I'm uh, from the Global Office. And I also have my colleague, Rachel, who is going to be talking to you in a moment. And she's from our creative faculty. That's great. Fantastic. So really good to be with you. Thank you for joining us. As I mentioned before, I'm really keen to hear your questions about any of the subject matter we're talking today, particularly as we talk about art and architecture, in particular looking at how you uh, create a portfolio as part of your application for a UK university. So if you have any questions, you can write those in the Q&A section and we will answer those at the end. So I'm going to hand over now to Emma and Rachel and we'll look forward to speaking again later. Thanks very much. Okay, Rachel, over to you, please. Thank you, Emma. So, um, as Emma mentioned, I'm Rachel and I work in the uh, Faculty of Creative and Cultural Industries. So, um, at the University of Portsmouth, that's the faculty that holds all of your creative uh, design and architecture courses. Uh, next slide. So when you're studying in a UK university and you're studying a creative or a design subject, um, generally you'll be in a faculty with other designers and other design subjects. Um, for example, in our faculty, we have a number of courses that are all grouped together that all use uh, creative and design facilities. 
Um, what you're looking for in this faculty is something, a team that's going to uh, basically look at you as an individual designer. Uh, you want to be taught by qualified professionals, uh, people with experience in industry. Um, if you're looking at architecture, you could also look at accreditations. Um, for example, the Royal Institute of British Architects. Um, you also want to look for a team that is going to support you in finding a career. So something like employability modules, um, that kind of thing. Um, and it's also really important that with facilities, you also have a technical team who are going to support you um, in your practice so that you learn how to do everything in the correct way. Um, that kind of will encompass a design, a creative faculty. Um, those are the key things that you're going to find. Next slide. So design and architecture covers a huge range of subjects. Um, the titles may be slightly different uh, depending on which university you go to, but the subject areas are usually uh, kind of similar across the country. Um, for example, in Portsmouth, um, our creative subjects are architecture and interior architecture and design. So two separate courses. Um, and then also fashion and textile design, photography, graphic design and illustration. And we do also have animation courses as well. Um, you might find these wording is slightly different across universities, but these are the kind of core subjects that you'll find um, across the design and creative industries um, faculties. And usually there will be a number of undergraduate courses and postgraduate courses as well to support this. So usually at, at least one undergraduate course will lead on to a postgraduate, but these are optional. So this is just something you can do if you want to um, at the end of your degree. Next slide. So when you study creative courses, your learning is split into different sections. Um, this again will depend on the course you go to, but in general, you will be finding a mixture of technology, history, communication and design within your courses. Um, and we'll go over a little bit about what these sort of sub, what these headings kind of mean um, in the next few slides as well. Next slide. Another thing you'll find with creative courses is that although some of them, for example, like this architecture course, do lead to a uh, accredited qualification title, for example, an architect, um, many of them will be a lot more flexible. So to give you an idea of what that means, if you want to become an architect, um, you have to complete a certain uh, range of exams. So there's a three step process to becoming an accredited architect um, in the UK. So for Portsmouth, that would be uh, three courses. So we have the architecture um, undergraduate course. Then we have a year in practice, which is where you would work in an architecture studio, then a master's course, and then a final exam course. Um, and that makes you a registered architect. So this would be a progression route. However, there are most of the creative courses that we run. So illustration, interior uh, design, um, animation, all of those, um, they're a lot more flexible. So you don't come out in the end as an animator, you come out with an animation degree. So you can choose what direction you want to take that. Next slide. This is an example. So this is interior architecture and design. You would have your degree. You could then either enter into your chosen profession, start your own business, find a job, or you could carry on to a range of postgraduate courses to specialize even further, for example, you could start with interior architecture and design. You could enter into an interior design or architectural practice or start your own firm in a similar subject area. Or you could study a postgraduate course in conservation architecture, sustainable cities, uh, interior architecture, all those kind of courses. Um, and again, there will be a number of different routes you can take um, at the end of your degree. It leaves it open to you as a designer. You can kind of choose what you want to focus on. Next slide. And generally, when you take design subjects, your typical week will include a lot of studio time. So you will have lectures and you will have seminars, but you will also have a lot of projects that you have to complete. Um, some are shorter and some are longer projects. Um, there may be projects that span the entire year, um, but you will have a lot of time uh, in the studio and you will also have a lot of time where you will need to do your own study. So your own studio time, your own practical work and your own research as well. So you need to be motivated and make sure that you are also happy working 
on your own as well as part of the team. But that's something that the lecturers can support you doing as well. So you'll learn that through the course. Next slide. So if we talk a little bit more about what the different elements of a creative course might be, um, obviously design will be a huge part of your course. Um, you are want to look for a course that doesn't just teach you how to design, but how to work as a designer as well. So you want that blend of being able to, like for example, being able to um, actually sew and create fashion garments, but you might also want to be able to work within the fashion industry. So there's that balance. Um, so some examples of what you might do on the design side of things would be um, understanding an art piece or a building, for example, and its context. Um, you also need to be able to think creatively to um, make produce ideas, original ideas, um, and also to use external inspiration and briefs to be able to create ideas. Um, you'll also be exploring uh, making and experimenting with different techniques, um, and it doesn't always have to go correctly. It's absolutely fine to uh, experiment with something, decide that it doesn't work and move on. And that's how, all part of the process. That's something that you'll be doing a lot in design courses. Um, and then we'll also be showing you how to put together portfolios for when you finish your degree and you decide to start in your professional career. Next one. So you'll also learn about history and theory. Um, so this will be a little bit more subject specific. Um, for example, in architecture, you'll be learning about architectural history, and that will be um, usually from a global perspective. Again, with all of these design courses, um, it's really, really beneficial to find a university that has a global perspective on these things, because these are all creative subjects that exist across the globe and are important to people across the globe. There's a number of different cultures and number of different societies that you'll be studying when you look at the history and theory modules um, so that you can find what interests you, um, you can find what inspires you, what you want to pursue. And you'll also look at both traditional and modern design theories. Um, a lot of our courses in Portsmouth, a lot of the design courses take a core set of modules called visual culture. Um, basically, it goes literally right back to print, early print kind of media, and it goes all the way through to modern day. And it gives students a sort of grounding in um, all different types of visual media and culture. Um, so you'll also potentially be in with other students from different subjects, which makes things really interesting um, because you get a lot of different perspectives. Obviously, a big part of your course will also be based on techniques and technology. Um, again, you want to look for a university that has facilities that you feel excited about using. Um, this could be very traditional technologies or very modern technologies. Um, I know a lot of creative industries courses do tend to cover both. Um, we do in Portsmouth as well. We like to look at everything from the traditional um, methods such as screen printing, model making, embroidery, uh, letterpress, and take things all the way through to the modern day using digital methods, um, 3D printing, um, CAD software, digital modeling, all of that kind of thing. So you're not limited by one or the other. There is a real, uh, a real benefit to having both included in your course. Um, when you're looking at a design subject in the UK, you will often find both sides represented. Um, and that's really important. So yeah, we do that in Portsmouth as well. I'm sure that my colleagues do that too. And then lastly, you'll also be looking at communication. Um, this is communicating your ideas. So this is very broad. Uh, it's very specific to how you like to communicate. So hopefully by the end of your degree, you'll find a way that you uh, feel most confident communicating your designs. So this could be through a number of different ways. We teach hand drawing, hybrid drawings, photography and editing, um, physical model making, portfolio creation, um, how to curate a, a fashion line, for example, or how to curate an exhibit, um, presentation skills as well. It's Imagine that you're a designer and you're pitching an idea to your client or you're a designer that's got a portfolio of work and you're trying to show what you can do. We want to make sure that students have that confidence to be able to promote themselves and pitch themselves um, in the way that they feel most confident. 
um, and you'll find that in a lot of universities as well that's very important because that sets you up as a designer being able to work in the design industries um, and being able to probably properly show how great you are at it as well links um networking and professional practice are also uh, key in looking for a position after you graduate um, a lot of courses will have embedded modules now this means that there will be chances throughout your degree while you're at uni while you're studying um, there will be chances to take up some professional experience so that could be um, meeting with potential clients that could be uh, doing very short projects with live companies. So that's something that we do quite a lot in Portsmouth is we'll have a company, um, for example, Dyson um, is a company that we worked with in the graphic design course. Um, and a representative came in, gave a brief to the students about what they wanted them to produce. And then the students worked on that project over um, one of our semesters. Um, and at the end, they presented their designs and pitched it to uh, the representative from Dyson to get feedback, uh, which was really exciting. That kind of thing gives you professional industry experience, um, but with the support of the university environment, which is really beneficial when you're starting out. You'll find a lot of universities have uh, placement options where you go to work for a company in your industry for either a few weeks, a few months, or maybe a whole year. Um, those are supported within the university. So you're not just left to go off on your own. You have a team within the university who are helping you, uh, helping you with interview preparation, writing your CV, um, finding a placement, all of that kind of thing. So um, it's a really great way to get some work experience while you're also studying. So another important aspect um, of design courses is facilities. So there is a lot of facilities that are needed um, for a design course. So it's really important to look through um, what is on offer at the universities that you're looking at. Um, but most uh, courses will have a dedicated studio space available. Um, for example, an illustration studio, a graphic design studio, um, or an architecture studio, and some on-site workshops as well. So these are spaces that are specifically used for um, a type of creative design. So for example, a workshop that is just for sewing, a workshop that is for screen printing, woodwork, um, model making, that kind of thing. Um, and you also want to have a mixture of uh, modern digital facilities and traditional facilities as well. So um, traditional drawing tablets and light box, um, to, light boxes to make kind of traditional 2D animation. But you may also want to see um, the digital drawing tablets to make 3D animation. So you want to see both of those sides. Um, there's more than just computers. Uh, it's also uh, workshop studio facilities. Um, it's really important when you're looking for a course and it's really beneficial um, and something that I know is very important across the UK as well when we're talking about design subjects. So you can see here a few of the facilities that is in Portsmouth, just to give you an example. So there are some of these are architecture specific facilities. You can see some 3D printing some studio space and this circular thing at the top is called a heliodon uh, and it shows the light coming into a building. So when you make a model, you can see where the light's going to hit. Very good. Um, and we also have some sewing facilities you can see at the bottom. And then there's a few more in the next slide. For example, there's uh, high um, large scale printers, sorry. So when you're making your um, your posters, your like um, presentation design, that kind of thing, you'll find um, the universities will have things like large scale printers, workshops, digital facilities here. Um, something that we um, also have a lot of in Portsmouth that we feel is really beneficial is we have a large uh, virtual and augmented reality center, um, which we're actually expanding this year as well. It will be opening in October. Um, here in the corner, you can see there's a, a fashion student um, or fashion model um, wearing the student's garments. And they're on a runway. Now, this green screen is because it was a virtual uh, runway. So when people were wearing the virtual reality headset, they were seeing the runway coming towards them. 
but the background and all around them was um, outer space, basically. So it was uh, really exciting and just kind of a new way to combine traditional and digital technologies. So if you're interested in that, um, in that kind of thing, then there are universities out there that do that and really look for those specific facilities that you like. Now, this is a big part of uh, applying for a creative course, which I'm sure you have loads of questions about, um, and that's making a portfolio. So not every course will require a portfolio. So I should mention that it's important. Um, some courses will ask for uh, grades or certain subjects um, in order to make you an offer. So that's absolutely fine. Um, it's just a different way of uh, assessing students. But if you haven't studied that subject before, generally you'll be asked to make a portfolio. Um, most of our courses from um, our faculty, so most of our creative creative courses, do ask for a portfolio, um, all except for the architecture courses. So it is important. Um, what you need to really think about when you're making a portfolio. Um, you need to show your designs, okay? You need to show you as a designer. You need to show what you're passionate about and uh, what you are interested in. And that's what the universities are looking for. They, although having a finished garment is very important, it's more important, actually, it's, it's key to see the design process. So um, you may have a finished piece, a finished model, a finished, um, design a finished garment but we also want to see how you got there so how did you uh, come up with this idea was it a brief from your university did you think of it off the top of your head did you see um, an exhibit in a museum that inspired you to make something which uh, designers are you um, influenced by so what have you seen that you've incorporated into your design and it can be very basic or it can be very high level it's it's totally up to you these can be pop culture references these can be historical references it's it's up to you we just want to see what you've incorporated into your designs then we want to see your process so how did you go about actually creating this item or this artifact did you uh try out a few different methods and then pick your favorite it's always really good to see what you've done. So all those experiments, even if it wasn't successful, even if you did three different models and you decided, I don't like these two, I like this one. You can include a photograph of those three models and explain why you chose the one you chose. It's really interesting um, and really important for the admissions tutors, um, for the creative courses to see your process. Um, it's more about the process than the finished piece because we can teach you how to make a finished product product but we want to see that creative thinking um, and then obviously if you've got a finished item you can include that absolutely fine if you don't have a finished item that's also okay um, you can definitely use your work your uh, portfolio just to show your process even if you didn't get a chance to make the finished piece because for example, if your finished piece was a huge ball gown, you may not be able to make it. If you don't have availability of a sewing machine, then it's okay. You don't have to include that. You can just show the entire process up to that point. I think it's really, really important to not be too concerned about a finished piece and make sure you include everything that you've done before that. So when you're looking to make your portfolio and you're thinking, where do I start? If you haven't done a creative or artistic subject at school, you can absolutely make a portfolio from your own work outside of school. Yeah, just from your own interests. It's no problem at all. It doesn't have to be something from school. It can just be something you're really interested in. You should start by reading up about your chosen subject area. So read a little bit about um, the history of illustration or a few graphic designers that you like or um, a few fashion designers or fashion houses that you um, are really inspired by. Um, make notes about what you like about these designers, these uh, projects. Just write down, even in note form, little like here and there, little bullet points about what you like. If you've got little sketches, um, add those in as well. Um, just however you record your ideas, 
is absolutely fine, but record those ideas down, okay? Visit events that are in your area or online. There's a lot of stuff that's accessible online now. So um, have a look for any art gallery exhibits, museum exhibits that are available online. Um, have a little search through what you can find um, in your area or even further afield now that we're online, it's a little bit easier to find some of those things. Um, you can also visit interesting uh, sites. So if you've got like historical architecture, that could inspire you across the creative courses. You might see a pattern that you really like that you wanna incorporate into a graphic design or an illustration. So don't be limited by thinking architecture is only buildings, illustration is only books. It's much broader than that, okay? Take a note of elements that you see around you that you engage with. So if you are constantly noticing colors that you really enjoy or textures or styles um, that you really, really like, then make a note of them, do some little sketches, take some photographs, that kind of thing. And then think about what defines your style. So are you, um, do you like a minimal style? Do you like a maximal kind of style? Are you uh, very detail oriented or do you like the broad ideas? Um, think about what you like, what draws you in as a designer and make sure that your portfolio really reflects that. And it's really important that you document everything that you're doing because all of these things that we've just spoken about are all part of the design process. And that's what your admissions tutors are gonna be looking for. Now, each university will produce a document on some guidance on how to make a portfolio. So it's really important that you read that for your course that you're applying for, because that will tell you how to show your work, for example, um, in a PDF or maybe hosted on um, a site like Flickr. Um, and that will also show you how many pages you can have maximum. So for example, you might say between 15 to 20 pages, no more than that. And that really prompts you to make sure that you're including your best work, your most relevant work. Uh, you can't include everything that you've ever done um, and it's not necessary. You just need to include a project that shows your creative process and what you like as a designer and what you are passionate about. That's a lot to take in, but once you get into the flow of it, it's really, really exciting. So a few things about the University of Portsmouth before I go, I would have to hype up uh, my university um, before I hand over. We have a number of courses, I mentioned a few earlier, um, but just to like remind you, our undergraduate programmes are fashion and textile design, uh, graphic design, illustration, photography, architecture, interior architecture and design, and animation. So um, our fees are um, 15,500 and we do have scholarships available. Um, it depends on a few different things, but there are scholarships available. So um, have a chat with us if you're interested in that. Um, and then I'll just go over the entry requirements briefly. Don't worry if you don't know exactly what the UCAS points means, um, but just to give you an idea, we're looking for 112 to 120 UCAS points for most of our courses. Um, so you can see on the screen, there's a few equivalencies, um, for different exams for your area. So have a little look at what you're doing. Um, and then, yeah, it, it looks like you probably wouldn't need to take an IELTS exam, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, you just need to make sure that you're up to that level. Um, and I think that's everything from me. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, I've got my camera working while you've been talking, Rachel, so yeah. I can actually be seen. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, Rachel. That was really good, really detailed and gave everyone a really good insight into what's needed for for any any design course at all. Um, and just to highlight just as some of those kind of entry requirements for Portsmouth. So if you're coming from a range of backgrounds like the Thanawea, so obviously that we would require a foundation if you do that. Um, and also the Indian curriculum, you know, we've got 70 to 75 percent. And there's lots of ways that you can come in without IELTS. So if you've got an A-level GCSE background or 75 in, in English from the Indian curriculum, things like that, obviously we will accept you um, without uh, IELTS. So, yeah, a lot of flexibility there. Um, but now we're going to go on and speak to some of our other universities on the line. We're going to start with Kent. Um, and I'm just going to move the slides on. There's Rachel's little final slide. Sorry, we missed that. Um, and we're moving on to Kent and my colleague, Diane. 
Um, thanks, Emma, and thanks, Rachel. That was um, very interesting. So um, just to tell you what we do at the University of Kent. So first of all, where we are, we're down in the southeast corner in Canterbury. Um, it's about 50 minutes by train to London. Um, the second photo on the slide here is the um, campus. So it's a very green campus. Um, very beautiful, everything's there, accommodation, sports facilities, socialising um, and very close to Canterbury, which is a beautiful medieval city. Um, if you're interested in architecture, there's a lot of it in Canterbury because there's so much history to the place. You can see examples of history of architecture throughout the ages. So, um, we do um, the part one and part two and also now part three of the architecture, the, um, the REBA um, accredited programme, um, and it's also accredited by the Archite Architects Registration Board. We also do graphic design, spatial and interior design and digital design. Um, now, there is a, a YouTube video here which gives you a little bit of, um, uh, of an insight into exactly what you would be doing, um, especially on the architecture programme. Um, but uh, we, we won't play that at the moment because of possible technical issues. Um, but if you want to um, have a little look at how we do things at Kent, do um, check it out on YouTube. Um, our entry requirements vary from um, ABB to BBC at A level, but of course um, we will accept students from just about every single uh, curriculum um, imaginable. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Um, we will have a look at and assess your application. Um, we have our own international foundation programme, should you need uh, to do a foundation programme. And we do one specifically for these programmes where you will do um, a double module in art and design to prepare you for um, all of these programmes. Next slide, please. Um, so we do have um, work experience and a year abroad, um, which you can choose to build into the programmes. Um, we were ranked um, seventh for graduate prospects in the Complete University Guide. Um, and that is because we really prepare students for work and the world of work. And we're very well known um, in the southeast corner and in London, where we've got lots of links with industry. So um, we can help you either get your work experience or uh, when you graduate, um, it, we give you lots of help finding um, work. So again, there's a link here to the portfolio advice. Um, I think Rachel covered um, most of it but there is specific ad ad advice there. Um, and then just a few um, photos here of the facilities at Kent. Um, we have um, a an end of year show that um, everyone takes part in, whether you're undergraduate or postgraduate. Um, we've got fantastic studio facilities you'll be doing especially in your first year a lot of um sketching drawing getting your drawing skills up before you then go on to the computers so um studio space is very important and then we've got interactive um critical uh, um crit spaces um with fantastic facilities so I won't go on any longer, um, but um, please do uh, pop your questions in should you need them. And um, our contact details will be available at the end. So please get in touch if you need any more information. 
Hello, so yes, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Nottingham Trent University uh, and the School of Art and Design and School of Architecture Build uh, and Design Environment as well. So we predominantly started as an art and design school uh, over 175 years ago. So it's one of the sort of areas we are very strong at um, and we offer a wide range of courses relating to art and design from fine arts fashion design uh, and fashion management that are in the top 20 in the uk at the moment but also ranging from knitwear animation illustration uh, a graphic design uh, and many many more as well with our school of art and design as rachel alluded to we do have courses that require a portfolio uh, and we have some courses such as our fashion management course that doesn't require a portfolio. So for those of you who are maybe interested in doing a sort of art and design course, uh, but maybe don't want to uh, do the sort of drawing side of things, maybe you're more interested in working within the fashion industry or in the business side of things, we offer courses ranging with that as well. Also, we offer courses related to architecture, interior architecture design, and a relatively sort of new course architectural technology as well it's very important to note that again these courses do require a portfolio uh, and with our portfolios uh, one thing to add on to what uh, Rachel rightly said is that um, our portfolios we do like to see lots of annotation uh, so we do like to see not just the final product but the process of getting to the final piece of work that you've uh, submitted in the portfolio but we want to see what you're thinking as well and why you've decided uh, to maybe present that piece of work that way and what's inspired you as well. Um, so we do offer a wide range of courses uh, at the university. Um, currently our fees are £14,500 uh, with scholarships that are available uh, £2,000 for each year as well. Uh, and then just moving over to the next slide be able to just talk about a little bit about the courses and how they're taught so at NTU we sort of pride ourselves in making sure that our courses uh, are giving you the right skills needed so that you can go into work straight after graduating uh, and we have the largest employability team in the UK uh, and the courses that do offer placement opportunities we are actually in the top five in the UK for offering these uh, as well so you are given help guidance and support throughout your time at university you won't just spend time in the lectures and seminar rooms uh, we have a wide range of workshops that are actually available for students inside and outside of term time as well and quite often especially with the artistic courses it comes culminates in a graduation show uh, as well and as you can see with the picture there uh, that those are four students sort of modeling their pieces of work at the graduate fashion week as well on the right hand side you can see a wide range of sort of qualifications that we have uh, and that we accept uh, ranging from 112 to 120 UCAS points uh, but outside of those again we do accept the CBSC qualification as well if you are studying the Thanawea uh, you will be required to do a foundation year as well um, but as this uh, will be put on uh, the StriveScan website um, you can have a take a look at the course links below or just simply type in uh, Nottingham Trent University Art and Design to find out more information about our Art and Design School and Nottingham Trent University Architecture to find out more information about our architecture courses as well so I'm just going to pass over to my next colleague now Thanks, Hamza. Brilliant. Uh, thanks also to um, Team Portsmouth. That was so helpful. Um, just a little bit from me. Um, as I said before, I'm based up in Liverpool, uh, Liverpool John Moores University. Uh, Liverpool is in the northwest of the UK. We are near to the city of Manchester, if you don't know. And we're two hours on the train, two hours, 10 minutes from London. Um, our um, art and design school is a top 10 art and design school in the UK. And you can see we've got a really good reputation for art design and also for architecture, all taught in our award-winning uh, John Lennon Art and Design Building, uh, named after, of course, John Lennon, one of the four Beatles, for those of you who didn't know who he was. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we offer um, a wide range of courses, both in the area of architecture and in art and design, and those, those courses are listed in front of you. Uh, the, I, I think the one thing I wanted to, to sort of flag really on here that's perhaps different from what's in front of you is just um, something about scholarships and price. So for those of you who are, are, are listening and are thinking about uh, coming to the UK in 2022, 
rather than coming in this September. Um, our prices will be, I think, £500 higher next year, so for 2022, so it'll be £16,600. Um, but that scholarship information that is on the screen there for 2022 will be different. So if you're now perhaps in year 11 and, or year 12 and you've got one more year before you plan to come to the UK, or you're taking a break and you're going to come in 2022, for example, um, our fees will be 16600 for those art architecture courses, but you will in fact receive a £3,000 scholarship for every year of study not just the first year um, coming this year um, the fees on the page are correct that's sixteen thousand one hundred pounds for any of those art courses or art and design courses and architecture and you will receive three thousand pound scholarship in the first year followed by one thousand pounds in the second year and the third year if you're joining us this September. Lots of information, of course, as others have said on our website, you can find the specific details about the individual courses. You can watch videos of perhaps some, some of the art shows that have taken place at the university and, and find all the important information as well about how you make an application. I'm happy to answer any questions um, when we come to the end. Thanks very much. Hello, I'm Jill. I'm from the University of Central Lancashire. We're, as I said before, we're up in the northwest of England. We're not a million miles away from Liverpool, actually. Um, about 50 minutes away from there, 50 minutes from Manchester, about two hours from London as well. So there is a map on the screen so you can see where we are and where our branch campuses are as well. Um, so at the university, we've got a portfolio of courses that sit within our School of Art, Design and Fashion, and those are looking at the fields of animation, design, fashion, fine art, games design, photography and so on. Um, we do offer architecture. It's the um, part one and part two that we have, and those actually now sit under our School of Engineering. So if and when you start searching your courses, if you're doing it by school, um, you would need to look under engineering for our um, architecture programmes. Um, but the School of Art, Design and Fashion was actually founded in 1859. So um, the courses that we have at UQAN have got an established heritage and we've got a philosophy of creative thinking thinking that's really embedded into our curriculum, um, as are things like having live briefs and work placement opportunities uh, as a part of the programmes as standard as well. Uh, like everybody, we've got some great facilities. So we've got the cutting edge facilities and lots and lots of amazing equipment as well. Um, we've got a purpose built media factory and we've also got our own gallery. Um, the workshops that we've got available include everything and anything. So we've got advertising studios, animation studios, a digital print studio, uh, a games design studio, life drawing studio, a printmaking studio, lots and lots of um, relevant studios. And you can see some of the pictures, although they're quite small on the screen there. Um, we also actively encourage our students to try and participate in some external competitions. So we've got a lot of award winners for things like Graduate Fashion Week, and those are either national or international competitions as well. Um, the gallery that I mentioned before, this is a great opportunity for all of our students to exhibit your work um, and you also get to work alongside professional artists and get that live work experience as well. Um, so during the year, what we do is we host a, like a, a weekly rotation of performances and exhibitions. So you, you get that hands on experience of, you know, displaying your work in a gallery setting and having uh, members of the public come out and, and view it. Um, the network of staff that we have, they're all high caliber professionals, they've got a real extensive breadth of um, experience and lots of specialist knowledge. Again, that all kind of informs our curriculum development. So the experience that you have and those connections that you have with industry are going to ensure that you're getting appropriate skills and connections to launch you into your career. Um, so as I said, we are in the northwest and UCAN is actually located in the heart of the UK's biggest regional advertising sector. So as well as that, we are very close to those creative hubs like Manchester and Liverpool. Um, the UK is also the largest games development sector in Europe. So if that's the route that you're wanting to go down, you're in a great place to launch that career, as I said before. Um, we also have a range of uh, portfolio guidance videos, very similar to what all of my colleagues said and to what Rachel's gone through. If you want the links to those uh, YouTube videos, you can get in touch or find them through our website. 
Um, but yeah, the courses that we offer are displayed on the screen now. These are all the bachelor programmes. We do have additional master's programmes available as well. Uh, the entry requirements really vary. So I've separated the architecture requirements because those are slightly higher than the other art based programs. But we are a flexible, um, we have a flexible admissions policy. So um, when you're looking to study with us, we don't have specific subjects in mind that you should have studied. So if you haven't done art design or anything related in your high school career, that's not the end of the world. We'll be looking to see how you can demonstrate that, that creativity and that passion within your portfolio. Um, as with everybody that's mentioned before, if you're doing Thanoea, then you would need to do an international foundation year. Uh, and our partner is On Campus and NC UK. The tuition fees for our um, programmes that are starting September 2021 are £13,000 per year. You could achieve scholarships of up to £5,000 per year as well. So we've got a range of scholarships and bursaries that are available. So that can significantly reduce your overall tuition fees. If you're still looking for September 21, for us, we do have an application deadline of the 1st of July. So we would need you to try and get your application in as soon as possible. But if you're looking ahead and you're looking for September 2022, as Matthew said, the tuition fee might vary ever so slightly, but you've got lots of time to get that application in. I think that leads us to Ian for Northumbria. Thank you very much, Jill. I'm going to be extremely brief, as brief as I can, because I know that we only have 10 minutes left and I can see the questions mounting up there and I want to make sure that we answer those for you. So Northumbria is a top architecture school within the UK, um, recently ranked 10th uh, for design and crafts in the Guardian League table last year. Just a bit about the city of Newcastle and why that's interesting. Um, particularly for architecture. Grey Street, which is um, in the centre of Newcastle, is um, widely regarded as one of the most beautiful architectural uh, streets within the UK and has won several awards as well. Um, so that's a real plus there as well. We have you know, fantastic uh, levels of uh, employment beyond studying with us as well. So when we look at, uh, for example, uh, all three of Northumbria's performing arts, uh, undergraduate programs, they're in work off, 95% uh, of those are in work off uh, the study um, beyond graduation as well. And we have, you know, as my other um, counterparts mentioned, you know, extensive accreditation, and that includes um, the REBA uh, part one and part two as well. In terms of entry requirements, it is one of our most prestigious courses at our university, um, because not only is the course fantastic, we have fantastic uh, studio facilities and design uh, facilities on campus as well. So um, we're looking at between 120 and 136 UCAS points and that 136 will probably be reflective more of our architecture rather than our other design courses. There's some other indications there as to our entry requirements um, from other curriculums as well. And as my counterparts have mentioned as well, you know, portfolio may be required for some of our uh, architecture for our design courses and our art courses as well. Um, and you can see that in terms of fees, we would be charging £16,000 per year. Um, we've got scholarship amount TBC there. We've just got word that our global scholarship will be continuing, which is a guaranteed reduction in fees of £3,000 in the first year of study and £1,500 each year after. So I don't know if I have one more slide. Perfect. So again, I'm not going to go into the, too much of this at all because I'm aware of time. We do work with leading fashion brands, um, leading design brands as well. So some names that you may have heard of, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, Paul Smith, uh, Abercrombie and Finch, Mars, Donnell, Samsung. You can go onto our website, you can see the vast, extensive um, range of different employers out there that we work with. And as I mentioned, employability at our university is fantastic, whether that be that you're studying architecture, a design course, or a fashion course. Um, just talking of fashion, just very, very briefly. Finally, um, we do have Newcastle Fashion Week as well, which is a very big celebration that we get involved in as a university as well for our fashion students. So I'll leave it at that. And I think that gives us uh, nine or 10 minutes to answer your questions. So I'm going to flip over to Emma, who's going to walk us through the Q&A and the questions that we've had submitted over to Emma. 
Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, yeah, and thank you, Rachel, for your presentation. I'm actually going to come to Rachel first with the first question, which was basically um, uh, Eleanor has written that in, in her GCSEs, she got five in fine art. However, since then, her arts improved significantly, and she's hoping to show that in her portfolio. Will a university dismiss an application due to the grade from her GCSE? Oh, absolutely not. You don't need to worry about that. So um, the grades that we look for for the UCAS points, um, so the, what we want for our entry requirements would be like a level three qualification. So your GCSEs, you don't need to worry if you didn't do as well as you wanted to in art at GCSE. You can absolutely show us through a portfolio. Um, and that I'm sure will be similar for my colleagues um, as we've sort of been mentioning. Um, we accept applications based on a portfolio because when you are looking at a creative course, you often have people um, applying who have not studied that subject before, but have a passion and a skill for it um, or for design. So if you have got a grade in the past, that's not quite as good as you would hope it would be. It's still worth applying and making sure that your portfolio is really strong. OK, thank you. Um, Hamza, I'm going to come to you with the next one. Would it be possible not to take art as an A-level, but be accepted for art or architecture when it comes to university? So uh, the short answer is yes. So many universities don't require art or an artistic subject to be taken uh, initially at A-level. Um, but again, if a course does have a portfolio, you will be required to sort of submit a portfolio uh, as proof of your artistic skills as well. So you don't need art or any artistic uh, subject in order to apply and receive enough offer for a course. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, even if a course doesn't require portfolios, can we still provide one, Diane? Could you answer this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, there's no harm in providing um, a portfolio um, as long as it's a good one. <laughs> um, you know, you don't want to have got fantastic A-level results and you've got a place on the course and then uh, your portfolio... I'm sure if you've done a level your portfolio will be fine um I, it, there's no harm in doing it i wouldn't have thought um but it might not be necessary okay and i think this links to the first question that rachel answered so i will go back to rachel with this question which is basically looking at those grades what's more important the grades or the portfolio what do you think so it does depend a little bit on what course you're looking at so if your course has a subject requirement, for example, if you're doing um, illustration and they wanted you to have an art subject, then that would obviously be important to show that grade. But the portfolio is always important because it's your backup. So if you're looking at a course that has a portfolio requirement, then your portfolio is really, really important. And you should definitely focus on that. If you do have a subject requirement, as an entry requirement for the course, then try and make sure that at least that grade is strong. If that makes sense. Like okay, for example, yeah. for us, for fashion, we're not worried if you've got a low grade in science, we're looking more for design portfolio and uh, art subjects. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Jill, I'm going to come down to you for this one. So this is about scholarships. Obviously, um, you've mentioned scholarships um, at uh, UCLan, but so what scholarships could generally are available? Could you just give a little overview on that? Yeah, well, I think really it depends on the university that you're applying for. Now, if you've got a student who in this situation is doing uh, the national curriculum, which requires a foundation year, um, again, it depends on the university if they have their own international foundation year, like I think Diane does, or whether you need to go through an external provider like you would for us. So we work with on campus NC UK and so on. Um, so that would be the first route to take is do that research um, to see which foundation you need and if they've got any scholarships. And then you can look at the universities. So my example would be if you had done your foundation year with on campus, you're going to get our international bursary. And then you're also going to get our on campus bursary because you're coming through our partner. And those are both uh, guaranteed scholarships.
scholarships that we would offer. Um, and then if you met the academic instead, you would get that because it's a higher amount than the on-campus one. So I think a lot of universities will work in a similar way where they kind of um, reward that partnership. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to the universities. We all sing about our scholarships, so it would be very easy for the students to find uh, the best uh, the best amount of scholarship. Yeah, definitely worth checking all the web pages and hunting down what we've got or getting in contact with us. And all our contact details are up on the screen right now. Um, I'm going to come to Ian now. Um, Tatiana asked about, so she's basically kind of focusing on um, her portfolio and looking at interior design. Um, mm -hmm. Would she need to focus her portfolio on interior design projects, Ian? Yeah, I would first of all recommend checking out the website for the university that you're applying for, because there's going to be useful hints and tips as to what that university is looking for in a portfolio. Speaking from um, a Northumbria perspective, I mean, contextually speaking, it may help if your portfolio was in that area just so you know it's recognizable and under, more understandable uh, to the person reviewing it however for a lot of our courses we don't actually require your portfolio to necessarily be linked to a certain area it's something that rachel mentioned earlier which is all about seeing what your process is and seeing your creativity so um i guess really for us the kind of general answer is no actually um and i don't know if any of my counterparts want to interject and tell me any different I would say no, the I same completely thing. agree. Yeah. yeah. And and for, for architecture, very often people think that they have to do a portfolio full of buildings. You don't at all. I think it's just the creative process um, that is the most important and your creativity, imagination and where that takes you rather than doing pictures of buildings. That's what you're going to learn on the course. And I think that's really answered Ria's question as well, which is, does it have a certain, does it need to have a certain theme? And, and the answer is definitely no, it doesn't have to be one specific theme. Um, and then Matthew, for the last question, uh, if anyone else has got anything else they'd like to ask, please do. Uh, but do any of the universities incorporate interviews as part of the application process? I'll mute myself, of course. It will vary uh, course to course, university to university. I'm just looking at ours, for example, and for some of our art courses, we do require an interview. Uh, for example, the fine art course. Fine art course, we assess your suitability based on reviewing your portfolio, but also an interview. Um, that would be similar for our graphic design course. It wouldn't be for our fashion course and it wouldn't be for our architecture. So really the best advice would be to look on the individual websites of each university, go on that course search page, put in architecture, put art or design, and then each course page will have that information on how they assess what the specific entry requirements are. And of course, if you've got any questions, as you can see, our contact details are on the page. So you can email us and we can help you uh, or direct you to the right people who can answer your questions. OK, brilliant. Um, so that has come to the end of all the questions. Um, and there's been some really good questions, actually. And you've been really engaged and you've stuck with us as well throughout the presentation. So thank you very much. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'm just going to move on to the very, very final slide, which is basically us promoting our next few presentations. So over the next few weeks, we've got um, a computing programs in the UK spotlight. And then the final one would be top tips to help you prepare for your UK uni study in 2021. So um, if there's any counsellors watching or, or students who've got friends interested, brothers, sisters, whatever, please do promote it. We will be sending out our emails later in the week um, and we will be back next week with our computing um, area. So unless anyone's got anything else to say, I'll say we're, we're finishing up there. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you found it useful today. I'll just add a quick reminder, Emma, if I will. Um, obviously on the link that you will have signed up for this, uh, you can see this and previous pre presentations. So if there's something you heard Rachel say earlier, which was extremely useful, wasn't all of it, and you go, oh, I missed that, what did she say? I wish I'd written it down. You can watch uh, Rachel on repeat to your heart's content. So. Um, have a fantastic evening. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see hopefully many of you next week. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.